Welcome back for another virtual science camp. Uh, today, I'm happy to be joined by my very good friend, Alan Damon, for a special uh, biology themed session, Flower Power. Uh, so, Alan, thank you again for joining us. Well, it's great to be here. Uh, thanks for the invitation. I, um, I'm thrilled to be able to speak a little bit about biology because there's a lot of physics on your channel, uh, which is great, but I think we need a little bit more life science. Um, so today I'm going to be uh, walking around my garden and showing various flowers, uh, some of them edible, some of them uh, not so edible, um, but just to kind of uh, show, yeah, the, the function and the form of flowers. Uh, we'll be looking at things like um, how do flowers attract insects. There, there are other ways that uh, flowers can be pollinated, but I'm going to be focusing on insects. Um, and yeah, we'll see that uh, there's all kinds of interesting things to see and sometimes super small that you don't even notice. You just walk right past them. Excellent. Uh, thanks again for uh, being with us and uh, sharing that with us. My pleasure. And uh, just a note for anyone watching this, uh, I accidentally forgot to record the first uh, couple minutes of the session. So it'll skip in to, to be part way in. Uh, that's my bad. I'm, it's a learning process on this. So this is actually an introduction we filmed just afterwards. So it kind of sets the stage for things. That's pretty cool um, to think about. We, we can't see uh, certain things and they can see it. Um, so the world looks different to different creatures. All right, let's go to the next one. Okay, so here's a picture of a uh, flower from my backyard. This is from a cherry tree. Um, and they're, they are pretty much in full blossom for, for one of them. But uh, the, the first one in my yard, it has kind of uh, faded a little bit and, and the, uh, the petals have all fallen off. So here's the basic bits and pieces of a uh, flower. So the female part is called the pistil. Um, and hiding down inside of it. So if you look on the right hand side of that image, uh, you'll find uh, the other part of the pistil, which is where the eggs are going to be. And then there's the nectar that's also way down in the bottom. The male part uh, there is labeled there. That's where the pollen is. And then, of course, uh, the petals. That's where the colors are going to be. And so, one way to, to really stick out is to mix all the colors together. So, if you have um, uh, you know, all the colors of the rainbow together, you get white. Okay, next slide. Okay, so that plant that I just showed you, we can play the video. Uh, I did a video yesterday, um, just um, trying to get a zoom in and a, and a close up of uh, the, the, uh, the action of something landing on the, uh, on the flower. So there, when, when there's pressure put down, I'm using a needle there. Um, when pressure is put down on the bottom petals, uh, the parts of the flower that are doing the reproductive uh, job are exposed. So we have the, um, the anthers that have the uh, pollen that are usually quite colorful. And then hiding in there, there should be a pistil, uh, which will collect pollen from another flower. Okay, um, maybe come back to me and I'll take you around the garden a little bit and show some other things. So there are some flowers like these guys here. And just so Mr. Gregory knows, I'm not necessarily going in order. Um, these are all closed up. It's kind of cool this morning um, and the sun hasn't reached this part of the garden yet. So uh, they're actually closed. Um, and I've got a little video of that as well. Uh, maybe if Mr. Gregory wants to go to the uh, daisy um, slide, we can check that out. I've got pictures both of the daisies open and closed. So here's what it looks like when it's open. So during the daytime when it's nice and warm, it'll open up. Um, but at nighttime when uh, it gets cool and uh, humid, it will close up. And quite a bit of, uh, quite a few flowers do this, not all flowers, but quite a few tulips do it. Um, I was hoping to show you some tulips today, but all of my tulips are past their peak. Um, so that shows that yes, uh, flowers can actually sh uh, know what time of day it is or what season it is. Obviously if these flowers opened up, uh, two months ago, it would have been way too cold and they would have all died. Um, so they know which months are, are going to be appropriate for opening up. And also, if they opened up too early, there would be no insects. Uh, if it's too early in the spring or if it's still late winter, um, they, they won't uh, find any luck uh, helping with their reproduction. Okay, let's, uh, we can switch back to my camera. And I can take you over to some flowers, which... Uh, and the other thing I want you to look for is... Um, 
in, in addition to the shape and the color, uh, look for things like numbers. So if you count the petals on a lot of these flowers, um, there are some numbers that come, uh, come up regularly. Okay. So yeah, Mr. Good. Just hold up a, a sec. I'm having a hard time sure. switching back to your camera. So we'll uh, just give that a moment while I sort out how to do that. Sorry for the delay. So I'll just keep uh, mentioning, yeah, that um, n numbers to look for are um, the number five. So a lot of the flowers I show you today, you'll see, uh, should have five petals. Um, there we go. So if you count, these are uh, primrose. Um, and if you count the number of petals, you can see very clearly that there are five petals on each flower. Um, this also has um, radial symmetry. So if you put a mirror uh, through it, it'll pretty much more or less uh, show the same thing. It is true, it's hard to show five petals uh, with a perfect mirror symmetry. Um, but uh, again, it has the target uh, with different colors in the middle to, to make it very clear to insects where they should go to get the nectar. And then deep down inside is gonna be the, um, the reproductive bits. Uh, the next one I wanted to show you is over, over by my wood pile here. Um, and that is a pretty small flower grass in the way here. I'm going to put a little yellow card behind it just to kind of show him a little bit better. I hope, maybe, yeah. Um, so this is a violet um, and it's quite an amazing little uh, flower um, and I've got some, it's really hard to see because it's quite small. Uh, maybe it's just better with my fingers here, but uh, as you can see it's just a maybe a couple uh, centimeters across. Um, and it's got some pretty amazing lines on it. So that's the other thing too that flowers uh, can do is they sometimes will have uh, almost like a landing strip for, for an airplane at an airport. They'll have lines on them to say, you know, land this way and come this way. Um, so or it's almost like lanes on a highway. Uh, so maybe Mr. Gregory, can we show the, the close-up uh, video of the um, violet? Of the violet, yes, just queuing yeah. up. Okay. And again, these are so small, it's easy to just kind of walk past them and not notice them. Uh, you, and to really appreciate, appreciate them, you have to get down uh, really close to the ground. Okay, and uh, playing the video now? Yep, go ahead and play it, yep. So I was able to film this with a different camera, uh, one that gets really close up. So this is the same flower, again, remember, this is only a couple centimeters across, even though it's filling up the whole screen. And um, so you can see the lines there are quite spectacular, beautiful, very, very dark purple, almost black lines. Um, it's got a little kind of tube in the back. Um, so that's why I turned it around there. You can see a kind of purple tube uh, going towards the back. And that's where um, I suspect, that's where the uh, nectar is hiding. Um, so what I did is I cut one open and I, uh, put a needle in just to show kind of the path that the insect would take. And notice how it's going all the way to the back uh, and you're able to, um, to see that, the, the path. So again, again, I wonder if this is a way of selecting certain types of insects, only ones that can fit way down inside there would be the ones that were appropriate to uh, pollinate this particular flower. I don't actually know what those little hairy bits are. They, they don't seem to be the, um, uh, the things producing or collecting pollen. Um, I know that some flowers are very adept at imitating other insects, and so they will um, try to look like an insect. Uh, so it's quite, uh, quite a spectacular, and this is really a beautiful flower, even though it's a little tiny thing that most people would probably miss. Okay, uh, what else can I show you? Uh, so yeah, maybe come back to my camera. So it should be back again, is it? I've got on my screen back on me. So here's another small flower. Again, you can see just from the size of my hand, this is not a very huge thing. Um, and this is a buttercup. And it's kind of hard to see with this camera, but uh, it looks kind of boring in the sense that it looks like it's all the same color. Um, but in fact, there are very delicate little lines and actually ridges on the, um, on the petals. Again, pointing towards where the insects want to go to find the, um, find the nectar. So I've got a little video, again, a close-up video, if Mr. Gregory wants to put on the buttercup video. And just as I'm queuing up the buttercup video, um, do you think some of those yeah. ones might be an example of ones that might be more visible in infrared? 
There we go. So that's a bit clearer. You can see there's kind of a darker yellow around the, um, the, the anthers and stuff there. Um, and again, there's almost like these little lines. I don't know if you can see it on your screens at home, but um, again, it's like a target and it's like lines kind of pointing in the right direction. So there you can see little kind of ridges. And this last shot of the buttercup shows um, that it's not just color and shape, it's also texture. So insects like the feel of certain surfaces. So clearly this is nice and shiny and smooth um, on the petals there. You can see the light glistening in the bottom. Um, so flowers are adapted to the types of insects that like to, um, like to pollinate them. All right, uh, so let's come back to my camera. Uh, you can hear some birds in the distance there. Um, so this, this is a red currant and it looks like it's not actually flowering. I don't see anything that's pr uh, bright and pretty and flowery. I don't see anything that, that looks like a flower. And yet, if I uh, zoom in here, I'll put, again, I'll put a yellow card behind it so it kind of separates it out. Uh, so I don't know if you can see, maybe it's a little out of focus there, but those little uh, unassuming things that are ha hanging down, those are actually the flowers. They are absolutely minuscule. There's only maybe, they're about two or three millimeters uh, across. Um, and they're just tiny, tiny, tiny flowers. So you really have to look close if you want to see the flowers of a, um, uh, of a red currant. So maybe Mr. Gregory, you can show the, the slide, the video of the red currant. See, I've got the date on this one from yesterday. Uh, and actually, if you look, there's one of them that's transformed a little bit, a little bit into a berry. Uh, so it's green now, but it's gonna turn red in a few weeks. Um, and the thing I'm pushing it around with is a, is a needle. You can see my fingers there and how small uh, these flowers are because my fingernails look huge compared to the, uh, the flowers. And so for a long time, I thought these must be uh, pollinated by wind because if they're so small and inconspicuous, they couldn't possibly be uh, pollinated by insects. But um, I looked it up and it appears that there are insects that pollinate this. And if you look closely on the video, you can see some little creepy crawly gr uh, guys on, these, um, on, this, on this video. I think on this one, for example, yeah, you should be seeing something crawling down the stem there. Uh, it looks like an aphid. Um, so these are extremely small insects. There's another close up. Look at the ridges on my finger, um, on my fingerprints. This is how small this thing is. Um, and you can see the green bulb there that's starting to form. That's the ovary of the flower, um, the female part of the flower, which will develop into the fruit. And that's what has this, uh, the seeds inside. So remember the whole purpose of a flower is to um, get pollinated. So the female cells and the male cells can mix together. And then you can um, form a fruit. Some of the fruits are edible and some are not. Uh, and then you, uh, the seeds will hopefully be spread when an animal eats the fruit and goes off and uh, deposits it somewhere with a little bit of fertilizer. Um, I wanted to show you one more thing. Hmm. I had it with me earlier. Um, yeah. So for example, the roses are just coming out. Uh, so I should switch back to your camera now? Yeah. Okay. The roses are coming out, but these are from last year. This is what um, a rose will produce uh, when it's finished and all the petals have fallen off. Um, these are called rose hips. They're the fruit of uh, rose bushes. Um, I, I've never eaten them. I don't think they're necessarily edible fruit. So remember, not all fruit is necessarily edible. Um, but if I uh, cut that open, I should be able to find um, some seeds inside. So each, um, each flower will produce some kind of, um, some kind of fruit with uh, a, 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 a seed inside. Um, oh yeah, I wanted to show you this guy over here. Uh, again, near my wood pile. Here again is another example of something that doesn't look like it's in flower. Um, I don't see anything spectacular, um, you know, with pretty colors or anything like that. And I don't, you know, I don't know if you can see, but this thing is actually unrolling. Um, there's a whole bunch of them there, back there. This is a fern. And the reason it doesn't have a flower is that it will never have flowers. This is a species of plant that does not reproduce using flowers. Um, it makes spores instead. So uh, 
I, I once wagered with some students that I would give them 10, 10 euros if they could find a fern with flowers on it. And of course I knew I would win because no, no ferns uh, produce flowers. So that's one of the true false uh, answers right there. All right. Can I ask uh, you a question yeah. about uh, ferns? Yeah. When, when they produce spores, do, well, do they have one life cycle, like one life cycle, or is it like moss where they have a diploid and haploid generation, where we're used to seeing the uh, haploid moss that's like a green mossy plant, but there's also a diploid generation where it does flower? Yeah, so ferns, instead of producing flowers, they uh, produce spores, and they have two parts to their life cycle. They have two different, very different forms. One is the big form, which um, is called the sporophyte, and that's the one we're seeing here. It's the, uh, the, the, the form that we see in parks and gardens and um, shopping malls and whatever. Um, and then there's another form, uh, which is much smaller, and it is called the gametophyte. And its job is similar to uh, the job of a flower, even though ferns don't have flowers. They, they have these gametophytes, and they're little tiny structures that will grow very close to the ground. And they contain the male and female reproductive cells. And when it rains, the water um, kind of trickling along the ground will help the male reproductive cells swim along and find the other gametophytes that have the female um, reproductive cells in them and uh, when fertilization happens then you can get a brand new plant so there's no flowers there's no seeds uh, in ferns instead they have spores okay um we did the red currant oh yes one of my favorites let's go check out the um uh, star flower here um so as i said some of these things are edible let me switch back to my front camera here uh, and speaking of edible, before I get to the star flower, here's some mint. It is not in flower, but uh, the leaves are definitely comestible, and it's nice to make a little mint tea. This is also a comestible plant, which is, is in flower. Um, so this belongs to the onion family. These are chives, um, and they make this. Uh, so here's the edible guy that I wanted to show you. So this is called uh, star flower, or um, uh, what's it, um, the word I think it is, it says it on the slide. And do you want me to switch to the slide now? Um, so these little flowers are actually edible. Uh, you can, um, yeah, sure. Just color and notice how it has the fun. So we'll see it on the close up video. Um, it's got the five, uh, petals. So there's these. Let's see on the video. That's the buttercup. There we go. Borad, yeah, boredge. Um, yeah, in French we call it bourrache. So yeah, here I'm I'm kind of uh, showing with a needle the uh, the male and female parts that are quite evident. So unlike the wisteria where they were hiding, these are quite um, uh, visible. And so here, uh, it's kind of hard to see the, the female part inside of that one single um, uh, little uh, projection sticking up. I think at the end, I kind of paused the video on that part. But again, if you look at the number of flowers we have, or the number of petals, sorry, on this flower, there's five blue petals and five of that darker, of a deep purple or almost brownish color. Um, these are gorgeous flowers. And look at all the little hairs all over them. Um, these are for preventing, um, since they are edible, preventing little creatures from eating them because they're, um, they're, they're kind of tickling your nose, I guess. Uh, yeah, so there it is. You can see that one stigma, yeah, sticking up off the top left of the picture. Um, so that would be the female part. And on the, at the very top, it's um, quite sticky um, when it's ready for receiving pollen. And it will, um, it, when, when insects rub up against it with the pollen on their bodies, it will, uh, the pollen will rub off on there. Okay, I think those are all the species, yeah. And uh, just to step in with, uh, with the question that was brought up in the chat, you remember how we had said if they're able to easily gather flowers uh, from around the house without uh, going out and buying anything new for this or like stealing flowers? Try and have <laughs> yeah. 
Um, so yeah. there's at least one who said they have a, a flower ready. Is there anything we can ask them to do with their flower they have at home? Sure. Uh, so if they go back to the, um, so you can share the, the, the slideshow that we've been using. And if they go back and look at the parts of the flower, otherwise a quick um, uh, Wikipedia search for, for the parts of a flower, we'll, we'll give a diagram. Um, and they can see if they can identify the different, uh, you know, male and female parts. Yeah, there we go. Um, now every flower is different as we've seen. So sometimes it's a little tricky to find the, the male and female parts. And there's also, um, uh, there's also some flowers that only have male and others, others uh, like for example, there are certain trees where you have to, if you want to have fruit from those trees, you have to buy two, one male tree and one female tree. Um, so one would only produce the male parts and the other would produce the female parts. Um, ash trees, for example, I like that. Uh, oh yeah, I know what I forgot. And I'm sure I know why I forgot it because I don't like these because they grow all over my garden. Um, dandelion. And there's another example of an edible plant. Um, and and so, do, you, do you want the slide of the dandelion uh, brought up? Yeah, let's just go right for the video, yeah. And, and, and just before we get to uh, the video to like mention the diagram of the flower, this one shows one, like I think we mentioned tulip would be a great example to uh, dissect yourself because yeah. it has a really big anther and really big stamen, so you can see that. So I see Alex and Charlotte have tulips. So that's a great one to like start opening and you can see the anther down the middle. It'll be really obvious to find these parts. And mm -hmm. if you have a dandelion, so I'll go to the uh, slide with the dandelion and you can see by contrast, the dandelion would be an awful one to ask you guys to dissect because these <laughs> parts are so yeah. much smaller. So that was the reason for asking for tulips. And it's great to see that you guys have tulips there. Um, do, do you want me to start the video on the dandelion yep. now? Perfect. Oh, uh, sorry about that. So yes, you probably have, have seen these because they're, they grow all over the place. Um, they're quite good at uh, being successfully pollinated and producing seeds. Um, so this is actually a flower head with lots of little flowers grouped together. So there's actually dozens and dozens of flowers all in the same place. Um, and then it transforms into this. I didn't find one of the ones that's perfectly spherical. Normally it should be a perfect sphere with all these lovely little um, fluffy things that help it to be carried in the wind. Um, and if you look, you can see, uh, I'm trying to separate them with a needle here. There we go. So we've got um, literally just dozens and dozens of seeds. So the dark blobs there are seeds. And then each one has almost like a little parachute. Um, and those things can spread out and be caught by the wind. And it was actually a windy day yesterday. So some of them did actually blow away. Um, and if you see, I've awakened a little insect that was crawling around in there. Um, there he is in the middle. And so, yeah, if a gust of wind comes along, up, oh, those things get pulled away um, and can go off into the into the fields or whatever and, and make new uh, flowers. So each each flower uh, can produce hundreds of new flowers. So I, I'm waging kind of war against them in my backyard because they just kind of take over. All right, I think that's about it. Maybe we can go to the true false. Uh, yes. Oh, so I'll go back to screen sharing again, uh, just a sec. Uh, yeah. Straight to the answers or back to the questions at first? Straight to the answers, yeah. Oh. And we'll wrap this up and see if there's any last questions. So the first two were false. So um, as we saw, there's, there's some plants that um, don't produce uh, flowers at all. So the fern is a good example. Um, scientists have identified 35,000. No, it's much more than that. It's um, 350,000, something like 369,000 different uh, flowering plants, which is a lot. Unfortunately, um, a lot of those are in danger of going extinct uh, because of all kinds of human activity. Um, plants can sense the time of the year or the time of day. Yep, we saw that. Um, not, so not all of them show it as vividly as the ones that can open and close, uh, but they certainly, um, uh, come out at the right period of the year so that uh, there's insects that can pollinate them or so that it's not too cold. Um, you probably eat something every day that was made by a flowering plant. Yes. So if you had anything made with um, flour, like from wheat, uh, wheat is a type of grass and that is a flowering plant. And um, so if you had a 
a, a croissant or any bread today. Um, or if you had some rice, rice is also a, uh, a flowering plant. So there's tons and tons of uh, food that comes from flowering plants. And this is a problem too, because the insects that um, um, tend to uh, uh, pollinate things like fruit trees, um, apples and, and cherries and things like that, they are uh, also going extinct or at least in danger. Um, and so we are, we could potentially face a uh, food crisis if uh, we don't do something about the insects. Um, and then some flowers have colors on them that are not visible. Yes, that's true, we saw the ultraviolet stuff. Okay, I think that's about it for me. Any last minute things? Does, it, does anyone have any questions they wanna ask before, uh, before we wrap up? Okay, and it, it looks like no one has anything they want to say. If, if you do jump on really quickly uh, before we say goodbye to everyone, but I'd like to uh, thank Alan Damon again for joining us. Uh, it's been great to have him. Like you mentioned, a lot of what I do is largely physics-based, and we can actually say that he wrote the book on uh, biology. You can see this is the IB textbook, and you can see he's the first author who's listed on that there. So uh, he did write the book on biology, and it's been a great pleasure having him along. Uh, so thank you again for joining us for this special session. Thank you. Thanks. It's been great. Goodbye. Oh, and there's a quick question which country we're in. So um, most of the people here are in France. Uh, I know I'm right in Paris. Um, so, uh, same with uh, Alan Damon. And so some of the sessions we've had people from a whole bunch of different countries, but I think this one seemed more interesting to people from right in France for some reason or another. Uh, a lot of the Turkish people, they're, they're more of uh, a physics, cr oh, physics crowd who joined me for that. Um, so again, uh, thank you everyone for joining me and especially thank you again to uh, our special guest host. I hope to see many of you uh, tomorrow. And if I could close with a joke, what kind of, or a riddle I guess, um, what kind of flower grows between your chin and your nose? Tulips. <laughs> what? <laughs> Two lips. Get it? Two lips. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll let them think about it. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Goodbye. Bye.